I'll be making two videos regarding ancestry hints. This particular video will be looking at hints more generically, and the second video will be looking at hints from the profile and how to actually handle the hint. But let's talk about hints generically first of all. Hints are just what they say. Hints are hints. They're not correct unless you do the research and source investigation that deems that you want this information moving into your tree. We shouldn't treat ancestry hints in any other way than we treat information coming from any other source. But they are very helpful because they do categorize pointers and allow us to cut down some of our research. Now, if there's any incorrect information in your tree or other trees on ancestry, it could be that the hints you get are also incorrect. So tree hints can have the effect of compounding problems or actually making your errors appear to be correct on Ancestry. So we have to be very, very careful. But let's look at hints from a generic point of view, first of all. And the first thing we should really understand is that there are some settings at the tree level that we may want to look at. So let me just go over the settings. I've opened that up already. And there's three settings, member tree hints, potential relatives not yet in your tree, and new hint indicator at top of page. And let me go back to the Ernest Hemingway class tree. The hint indicator at a profile is this green leaf that I'm pointing out here. At the top here, there's a, a leaf with a red indicator. Click on that, it shows me the new hints that are coming into the tree. Now you may or may not want to see them. They, they may, may or may not be relevant. If I'm doing investigations, I'm working to an investigation plan and new hints coming in are probably of not great of interest to me. So I can turn that off by going to new hint indicator and I can turn that on and off by a tree. So by just by clicking this check mark on the Hemingway family tree, saving that, Go back to the tree, let me just refresh and we'll see that red dot disappear. And now there are no new hints um, uh, indicated on top of the page. Also looking here, Ennis Hemingway, three of the four grandparents are missing, his great grandparents are missing. And that takes us to the, no, the next tree setting. Let me go down here again. Potential relatives not getting your tree. Now, this is set to off. Let me change that to on, save, go back to the Hemingway tree and let me just refresh that to show you the impact. And you can see now Ancestry has filled these boxes in with potential father, potential mother at the grandparent level. Now these are more than hints. These in my mind are suggestions. Let me just click on potential father here. I can review the details or add manually. Let me review the details. And because these are more than hints in my, my mind, these suggestions, they come with a whole host of information depending on what ancestry is found. So there's 16 records here. There's a number of photographs. And there's a family tree information from this particular virgin's family tree. But I would use caution again about adding directly this kind of information to your tree. There's a lot of information that you may or may not want in your tree, but it's a good indicator for further research. And I do have the option, let me close this off again, to add manually if I wish. I would suggest you always add manually after you've done the investigation of the details here. I normally have this switched on because it helps me to see that there's more information available to me. Purely uh, personal choice here. And then the final setting here is member tree hints. And to see that, I need to go to somebody's profile. So let me go to Clarence's profile and look at the profile hints that he has. He has 21 hints. And these are record hints. If I change this to on, save it, and then go back to Clarence and refresh the screen, 
We can see now it's brought over an extra hint. It's gone up to 22. And these are family ancestry member trees. And again, I can review these if I wish. I'll deal with the actual tree information a bit later on in another video. But what I would say with, with ancestry member trees is never, ever copy somebody else's tree into yours. Certainly look at the research, certainly go and thank them for what they've done, maybe even contact them. Uh, but if you contact, if you copy somebody else's tree into yours, it could have unintended consequences. So I would hold back from doing that. Anyway, let's go back to the, the tree that was looking at in his Hemingway's tree. And actually, I've got the new updated Ancestry uh, screen here that was released sometime in April 2023 with, instead of drop-downs, a bar here on the left-hand side. So I can look at hints generically. And if I click on the hints here, all hints, or I can actually use this and go to a specific tree if I wish to, look at the all hints. But let me go from here. It always ends up the same place. And it used, in this area, I can actually manage the hints holistically. I can sort by most recent, by first name or last name. I can filter by first name or last name. And I can look at specific types of hints if I wish. So if I wanted to look at photographs, I just click there. Now, the useful thing here, and the thing that the way I use this sometimes, is if I'm looking at a family. So maybe I'm looking at um, photographs, and I want to look at all the photographs that are available for the whole family. And we can see them there. So what I've done is I've selected photographs, I've filtered by name, and I'm not just now looking at all the photographs for the whole family. I could do the same for records. So this allows me to manipulate the hints at a generic level, see what's available. I'll tend to work at, with the hints at a profile level when I'm doing my actual detailed tree investigation. The other thing we can look at on this screen here is this little drop down. So from the all hints, I can actually go to Ernest Miller, view his hints, view his profile, or view his tree. Um, and this is useful. I can bounce backwards and forwards looking at what's, what's going on with Ernest. Or I can go directly to his tree here to have a quick look at his tree. Very, very useful uh, to, to look at hints generically. Now, most people will have many, many more hints than 173 I've got on this class tree. Uh, I, in fact, have many thousands. But let me click over, actually, to my tree, uh, my family tree. And this is something I probably want to show you here. Looking at this tree, one thing I don't have on the Ernest Hemingway tree is that this tree, because I am the root person of the tree, will give me my relationship with the, the hint. So for this, Anne Rendell. Anne Rendell is my third great-grandmother. So we can handle these generically at the top level. You can see I've got 10,000 and so hints at the moment. And we can go back to the the tree there in the Hemingway. Let's go back to the Hemingway tree. So that's handling trees at the generic level. Uh, on the next video, we'll look at how we handle the actual hints at the profile and how we'll process them. Thank you very much for listening and watching, and a happy investigations.